Oberon Edward William Molyneux Herbert, the 18th of June 1838 to the 5th of November 1906, was a British writer, theorist, philosopher, and 19th century individualist. A member of the Parliament of the United Kingdom, Herbert was a son of the third Earl of Carnarvon. He was member of Parliament for the two-member constituency of Nottingham between 1870 to 1874. He promoted a classical liberal philosophy and took the ideas of Herbert Spencer a stage further by advocating voluntary funded government that uses force only in defense of individual liberty and private property. He is known as the originator of voluntarism. Life Oberon Herbert was born at Highclere Castle on 18 June 1838. He was the third son of the third Earl of Carnarvon, and brother of Henry Herbert, the fourth Earl. Herbert was educated at Eton College, entering the school in 1850. He left school early, having been elected to a Founders Kin Fellowship at St. John's College, Oxford in 1855. In May 1858 he joined the 7th Queen's Own Hussars at Canterbury with the rank of Cornet by purchase, and in June 1859 became a lieutenant, also by purchase. In the autumn of 1860 he joined the service troops at Umbala, India. In 1861 he returned to England and sold his commission in 1862. He then returned to Oxford, where he was president of the Union in Hillary term 1862. He graduated BCL in 1862 and DCL in 1865. He lectured in history and jurisprudence at St. John's College, and resigned his fellowship in 1869. In March 1864, he visited the scene of the Prusso Danish War, and distinguished himself at Dibal by sallies from the Danish redoubts for the purpose of rescuing the wounded. As a recognition of his bravery, he was made a Knight of the Order of the Danbrog. His impressions of the campaign were recorded in his letters to his mother, published under the title The Danes in Camp. 1864. He went to the United States during the American Civil War, and he witnessed the Siege of Richmond 1864 During the Franco-Prussian War he went to France, and was present at the Battle of Sedan 1870. He was outside Paris during the Siege of Paris 1870 and was one of the very first to enter the city after the capitulation, being nearly shot as a spy on his way in. He remained there during the Paris Commune in the company of his second brother, Alan Herbert, who practiced medicine in Paris. In later life he received the Austrian Order of the Iron Crown, third class, for helping to rescue the crew of the pair, an Austrian vessel wrecked off Westward Ho. In 1871 Herbert married Lady Florence Amabel, daughter of George Cowper, 6th Earl Cowper. She died in 1886. They had four children. Of their two sons, the elder died in boyhood, while the younger, Oberon Thomas, born in 1876, succeeded Francis Cowper, 7th Earl Cowper as Lord Lucas and Dingwall in 1905. Their two daughters were Claire Mimram presumably named for the River Mimram in Hertfordshire, born 1874, and Nan Eno, later 10th Baroness Lucas and 6th Baroness Dingwall, born 1880. Topic. Political career He stood as a conservative candidate for Newport in the 1865 general election but was defeated. He held the post of private secretary to Stafford Northcote, the president of the Board of Trade from 1866 to 1868. He stood as a liberal candidate for Berkshire in the 1868 election but lost. He served as president of the fourth day of the first ever Cooperative Congress in 1869. He was successfully elected in a by-election for Nottingham in 1870 becoming a Liberal MP. For the Elementary Education Act 1870 he supported the principle that all provided schools should be secular or strictly unsectarian. His support for this act state provided schools is in contradiction to his later political position. In 1872 he seconded Sir Charles Dilke's motion for an inquiry into the expenses of the civil list, and followed Sir Charles's example by declaring himself a Republican. This led to a scene of great disorder, and the latter part of his speech was inaudible. He took a leading part in the passing of the Protection of Wild Birds Act 1872. He was an ardent supporter of Joseph Arch and spoke at the mass meeting at Leamington on Good Friday 1872, when the National Agricultural Laborers Union was formed. On account of his objection to taking life he became a vegetarian, he retired from parliamentary life at the 1874 general election. 
He took an active part in the agitation caused by the Bulgarian atrocities, organized in 1878 the Great anti -Jingo demonstration in Hyde Park against the expected war with Russia, and in 1880 championed the cause of Charles Bradlaugh. Speaking at some of the stormy Hyde Park meetings, he was an ardent but independent supporter of Herbert Spencer. His creed developed a variant of Spencerian individualism which he described as voluntarism. In 1884 Herbert published his best-known book, A Politician in Trouble About His Soul, a reprint with alterations and additions from the Fortnightly Review. In the first chapters the objections to the party system are discussed, and in the last chapter Spencerian principles are expounded and the doctrine of laissez-faire is pushed to the extreme point of advocating voluntary taxation. In 1890 Herbert started a small weekly paper, Free Life, which soon became a small separate monthly paper, the organ of voluntary taxation and the voluntary state which ran until 1901. Topic. Later life On leaving Parliament he took to farming, purchasing Ashley Arnwood Farm in Ashley, New Forest, where he lived until his wife's death in 1886. He then moved to the neighbourhood of Burley in the New Forest, and built, after a pre-existing building, the Old House, which was his home until his death on 5 November 1906. He was buried in a grave in the grounds of his house. <laughs> Voluntarism. Government, he argued, should never initiate force but be "...strictly limited to its legitimate duties in defense of self-ownership and individual rights," and to be consistent in not initiating force they should maintain themselves only through "...voluntary taxation." He stressed that, "...we are governmentalists formally constituted by the nation, employing in this matter of force the majority method." However, using this force only in a defensive mode. He strongly opposed the idea that initiation of force may somehow become legitimate merely by constituting a majority, reasoning that, if we are self-owners and it is absurd, it is doing violence to reason, to suppose that we are not, neither an individual, nor a majority, nor a government can have rights of ownership in other men. Herbert recommends a central agency to defend liberty and property that is funded by a voluntary tax," calling it, "...government." In his essay, "...a politician in sight of haven," Herbert does discuss the franchise, stating it would be limited to those who paid a voluntary, "...income tax." Anyone, "...paying it would have the right to vote, those who did not pay it would be, as is just, without the franchise. There would be no other tax. The law would be strictly limited, of course, and the government must confine itself simply to the defense of life and property, whether as regards internal or external defense. Herbert says that in "...voluntarism the state employs force only to repel force, to protect the person and the property of the individual against force and fraud, under voluntarism the state would defend the rights of liberty, never aggress upon them." A collection of Herbert's work, The Right and Wrong of Compulsion by the State and Other Essays, was published by Liberty Classics in 1978. Topic. Herbert and Anarchism In an announcement of Herbert's death, Benjamin Tucker said, Oberon Herbert is dead. He was a true anarchist in everything but name. How much better and how much rarer to be an anarchist in everything but name than to be an anarchist in name only. Tucker praised Herbert's work as a magnificent assault on the majority idea, a searching exposure of the inherent evil of state systems, and a glorious assertion of the inestimable benefits of voluntary action and free competition. While admonishing him for his support of profit in trade, but believes, unlike Herbert himself, that Herbert's system would result in an economy without profit. According to Eric Mack, Herbert felt that people who, like Tucker, favored the free establishment of defensive associations and juridical institutions were simply making a verbal error in calling themselves anarchists. Quote dot quote. Herbert explicitly rejected the label anarchist for his ideas. He argued that anarchy was a contradiction, and that the voluntarists reject the anarchist creed. They believe in a national government, voluntary supported 
and only entrusted with force for protection of person and property." He called his system of a national government funded by non-coerced contributions, "...the voluntary state." A voluntarist appeal. Herbert Spencer and the Limits of the State, pp. 228, 239. According to Chris Tame, he refused to accept the label of anarchist, largely because of a semantic decision whereby he labeled the defensive use of force, which, naturally, he accepted as government. Richard Sylvan points out that a variety of political arrangements and organization, including governments of certain sorts, are entirely compatible with anarchy. Rather, anarchists oppose the state or coercive government. Sean Sheehan points out, a distinction that is relevant to the anarchist ideal is the difference between the government, referring to the state, and government, referring to the administration of a political system. Anarchists, like everyone, tend to use the word government as a synonym for state, but what is rejected by anarchism's a priori opposition to the state is not the concept of government as such but the idea of a sovereign order that claims and demand obedience, and if necessary the lives, of its subjects." Anarchist William R. McKercher notes that Herbert "...was often mistakenly taken as an anarchist," but a reading of Herbert's work will show that he was not an anarchist. Freedom and Authority, pp. 73, 199. The leading British anarchist journal of the time noted that the Oberon Herbertites in England are sometimes called anarchists by outsiders, but they are willing to compromise with the inequity of government to maintain private property. Freedom, Vol. 2, No. 17, 1888. Since the development of anarcho-capitalism in the 1950s, at least one anarcho-capitalist, Hans Hermann Hoppe, believes that Herbert "...develops the Spencerian idea of equal freedom to its logically consistent anarcho-capitalist end," as noted in a bibliography. However, anarcho-capitalist Murray Rothbard disagreed and called Herbert a "...near-anarchist." Criticisms. <coughs> 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 Victor Yeros, an individualist anarchist, noted what he believed to be a key flaw in Herbert's ideology, namely economic inequality. In an article called, Private Property and Freedom, Yeros argued that Herbert believes in allowing people to retain all their possessions, no matter how unjustly and basely acquired, while getting them, so to speak, to swear off stealing and usurping and to promise to behave well in the future. We, on the other hand, while insisting on the principle of private property, in wealth honestly obtained under the reign of liberty, do not think it either unjust or unwise to dispossess the landlords who have monopolized natural wealth by force and fraud. We hold that the poor and disinherited toilers would be justified in expropriating, not alone the landlords, who notoriously have no equitable titles to their lands, but all the financial lords and rulers, all the millionaires and very wealthy individuals. Almost all possessors of great wealth enjoy neither what they nor their ancestors rightfully acquired and if Mr. Herbert wishes to challenge the correctness of this statement, we are ready to go with him into a full discussion of the subject. If he holds that the landlords are justly entitled to their lands, let him make a defense of the landlords or an attack on our unjust proposal. According to Karl Watner, Herbert never defended his position in liberty. Anarcho-communist Peter Kropotkin echoed Yeros and argued that the "...modern individualism initiated by Herbert Spencer is a powerful indictment against the dangers and wrongs of government, but its practical solution of the social problem is miserable, so miserable as to lead us to inquire if the talk of no force be merely an excuse for supporting landlord and capitalist domination." Act for Yourselves, Freedom Press, London, 1987, p. 98. G. K. Chesterton wrote, Herbert Spencer really went as far as he could in the direction of individualism, just as Karl Marx went as far as he could in the direction of socialism. He left only the gallant and eccentric Oberon Herbert to go one step further, and practically propose that we should abolish the police, and merely insure ourselves against thieves and assassins, as against fire and accident." Illustrated London News 15 February 1936, p. 266 John A. Hobson, an early democratic socialist, echoed the anarchist critique in his essay on Herbert, "...a rich man's anarchism." 
Humanitarian, No. 12, 1898, pp. 390–7. He argued that Herbert's support for exclusive private property would result in the poor being enslaved to the rich. Herbert by allowing first comers to monopolize without restriction the best natural supplies would allow them to thwart and restrict the similar freedom of those who come after hobson gave the extreme instance of an island the whole of which is annexed by a few individuals who use the rights of exclusive property and transmission to establish primogeniture Quote, in such a situation, the bulk of the population would be denied the right to exercise their faculties or to enjoy the fruits of their labor, which Herbert claimed to be the inalienable rights of all. Hobson concluded, it is thus that the freedom of a few in Herbert's sense involves the slavery of the many. P. 394. Hobson's argument reflected Proudhon's critique of inheritance and land laws in continental Europe in What is property? Scholar M. W. Taylor notes that, of all the points Hobson raised, this argument was his most effective, and Herbert was unable to provide a satisfactory response. Men versus the State, Clarendon Press, 1992, p. 249. Bibliography Among his published works are the Danes in Camp, Letters from Sonderborg 1864. A Politician in Trouble About His Soul 1884. The Right and Wrong of Compulsion by the State 1885. A Politician in Sight of Haven, Being a Protest Against the Government of Man by Man 1890. Bad Air and Bad Health 1894, co-authored with Harold Wager Windfall and Waterdrift 1894, A Volume of Poetry the Voluntarist Creed 1908 Topic See also Voluntarism Minarchism Anarchism and anarcho-capitalism Individualist anarchism Libertarianism Classical liberalism Topic Notes Topic. Further reading Mack, Eric 2008. Herbert, Oberon In Hamoe, Ronald. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage, Cato Institute. pp. 224–25. doi.10.4135.9781400.0001. Trillion seven hundred eighty one billion four hundred twelve million nine hundred sixty five thousand eight hundred eleven n one hundred thirty five ISBN nine seven eight one four one two nine six five eight zero four LCCN two billion eight million nine thousand one hundred fifty one OCLC seven hundred fifty million eight hundred thirty one thousand twenty four Topic. External links Hansard 1803-2005, Contributions in Parliament by Oberon Herbert Oberon Edward William Molyneux Herbert at Find a Grave Works by Oberon Herbert at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks